Hi, welcome to Stop Guys. I'm your host, Kyle. And I'm your host, Eric. And today, Firewalker. Fire, yeah, I was thinking the, the Firewalker. Movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, the movie with Chuck Norris. <laughs> All right, so we're starting off today's episode with a beer from Firestone Walker Brewing Company. Now, uh, 1996 was when they first got their start. They came out with a double barrel aged ale. And uh, it was started with uh, two buddies just kind of debating beer. Said they couldn't find anything they liked, so they just made their own. <laughs> sounds like two other guys that we might know and, and love. Yeah, sounds like a, actually a couple different starts to breweries <laughs> right <laughs> but uh so they took some old winemaking equipment they had laying around and converted it over to beer and some uh tests and bad batches later came out with their double barrel aged beer okay so at this point i would assume that they're tried and true they've had a couple failures leading up to success so yeah uh, i mean 25 years that's what they said 25th anniversary this year so yeah that's awesome yeah uh other than that, they're out of California. Oh, we've gone, we've gone, we've gone across. Yep, we're across, going the, across US. the U.S. And we don't do know. that often. <laughs> no, not at all. We usually either hop the pond or or stick local. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, we gotta start branching out, try to get those uh, extra people, those extra viewers. <laughs> so we found this in Connecticut, so you should be able to find it anywhere. Right. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a different crack. Oh, we're right. All right. That was a deep one. It was. That's a For big, how small that... That's a big old cork. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Ooh. Smells yeah. smells good. It smells fruity. Yeah, this is this is a red ale. So, wasn't expecting fruit. Well, eh, it says it's a... Oh, yeah, we didn't say it. It's American Wild Red Ale. Also don't know what that is. Coming out pretty red. Nice. Deep amber. See, that's amber. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, reddish hue. I don't know what a red ale traditionally looks like because they're always in brown bottles and I always drink them from brown bottles. Ugh. Like, I've never really had a pint of a red ale except a Smittix is a red ale, right? It's, yeah. Mm. They don't come out and say it on the bottle, but yeah, it's an ale. It's a red ale. I always think of Killian's and I've had that off the draft and it. I think it's a little darker than this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of my baseline for reds and... Smells like it's going to be sour. It does, honestly. It smells amazing. Yeah. Like when I walk into a brewery, I would I would hope that this is a bit what it smells like. Oh yeah. It smells very much like I don't I don't know how to explain it. it. Definitely got like some fruity, some tartness to it. Not that typical like uh, what do we say that rotten sour that you no, can get. No, I would I would this to me tastes like a perfect taste. It smells like <laughs> a good combination of maybe raspberry and and a lager hmm. and that's that's kind of that's the smell that i'm getting i want a freaking candle made out of this I like that in the house yeah mm, yep it's a sour it's pretty good yeah so they say it's on hmm. barrel ratio is 80 percent french oak 20 percent american oak the maturation time is 12 to 15 months Hmm. So, it's it's very tart and it's very very crisp. Oh yeah, lightly carbonated. Sits well on the tongue. Not Smooth much of a mouthfeel. No, but it, it's not like that. We've said it before that sour punch you in the face. It's got a very nice subtle, uh, not even a subtle sour. It's just very nice. Mm. It's just sour. Yes, yeah. it's a sour. It's not a pucker, and it's. Again, we've brought this up before. You get that. You get that almost bile taste with sours. This you you don't get that. No, not at all. It's. I'm definitely tasting a lot of cherry. Cherry sour yeah. cherry. Yeah, I get. You know, I it, it smells a bit like raspberry to me, but definitely tastes like cherry. Oh yeah, it's really good. Yeah, this is amazing. This is very very good. Mm. I. Yeah, I I don't have that much to say about it. It's, no, it's, it's just it's, it's very 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 good. Yeah, I will say shout out to the sound guy because, and I quote, "This beer is a goddamn enigma." It's true. 
It's mm -hmm. still crispy, still tart. Yeah, still cherry. So we were going back and forth, and we were like, we we're basically talking about how we have essentially no idea how this bottle can get away with with the label. I don't know what about this beer makes it a red ale. Mm -hmm. So the red ales traditionally boast kiln malts, roasted barley. They're usually buttery. They're usually reddish or a darker amber. This, I, I guess, has that. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, if I if I force it. But it's just so crispy and drinks like a cider. Just take over for me here. I don't know where I'm going. Oh, God, I don't know where to go either. I mean, I, I do like it. I really do. It's got that nice tart cherry flavors to it and everything. It's on the smoother side of things. I do get a crispness to it, but it's just really drinkable. Yeah, it's 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 very very good. I again, I I just I circle back because I don't know what about it makes it a red ale. It's a great beer, fantastic. Mm -hmm. I just don't think it's a memorable beer. I don't think we're gonna remember or talk about this really ever again, which sucks because it is really good. It just it's lacking something. I was expecting more red ale flavors to it with the sour with the cherry. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree with you actually wholeheartedly on that because if I had seen this, if I, if I had just making a trip to a store and I saw this bottle, I would buy it if I didn't find something else I wanted to try. Oh my God. And that's exactly why I just bought this this morning. <laughs> I really, I, I found some other stuff, but I was like, ah, ah, ah. and when I showed you what I bought and everything, we were like, all right, what? And you brought some stuff over and we're like, what are we going to try today? And we both went, okay, this one. Other than that, I will look out for other things from Firewalker. Firestone Walker. Firewalker. Fire, yeah, I was thinking the, the Firewalker. Oh, well, yeah, the movie with Chuck Norris. <laughs> Shout out to Chuck. <laughs> Want me on the show, Chuck? <laughs> but uh, it is. It's a very good sipping beer. Yeah, I'm not going to take anything away from this beer at all. No. I, I highly recommend any viewer to go out there and try it if you can find it. It's very, very good. Let us know what you think. Let us know what notes you're getting from it. Let us know what makes it a red, if you know. I probably wouldn't chug it. Yeah, sipping. Nope. That's a sipper. 100% a sipping beer. Do not chug that. Although it does taste a bit aptly with a big chug. I've got for you today, Outer Light Brewing Company's Libation Propaganda. This here is a coffee stout. No nonsense. It is a stout with coffee-infused or sorry, coffee added, not infused. Yeah. So that's better for me. I'm not looking for the BS. It's just a stout with coffee added. It is a collaboration with Ashlon Farm Coffee. Um, something fun here is that Outer Light is very local for us. It's in Groton, Connecticut. This is Groton's like what the sub base capital, right? Groton, yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. They also have good beer. This is actually my brother's favorite company, brewing company. So I'm really excited about this. And I guess I'll read the can for you. So they usually have some cool stories. So, <laughs> excuse me. The Libation Propaganda Coffee Stout is a specialized blend of locally roasted whole bean coffee and chocolatey American roasted barley, which makes their smooth velvety coffee stout. It's a treat for both beer and coffee lovers, supplying a different type of jolt. This ooh, delightfully aromatic brew is propaganda worth sharing. Ooh, nice, nice. So... Beer and coffee. Those are both of my favorite drinks. So, <laughs> shall we? Yep. Yeah, it's coming in at, you know, 5.5. 5.5, yeah, we're a bit <laughs> kind of, geez, excuse me. We're kind of on our lower end of the stats, right? And zero crack. Yeah. Very unspecial crack, yeah. It's dark. Yeah. 100% is a stout. It's super dark. Brown, I guess it's on the tanner side <laughs> of foam. Actually, holding up to the light, I'm kind of getting red bubbles. You see that? The hey, bubbles on my glass are you, like red. You got, yeah, you got bubbles up at the top there. Mine are just hanging yeah. out at the bottom. Hopefully you can see them. They're like right there, but with the light coming through, they were all red. I thought that was pretty interesting. I haven't seen that in a stout yet. Yeah. Mm. Although. You know, that tastes more of a coffee than a stout. It doesn't. Like you just. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, it doesn't smell like coffee. No, but it tastes more like you just brewed a cup of coffee. It smells like a stout. It tastes 
a whole lot more like carbonated black coffee than it does beer. Yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah. You still get some stoutiness at the end, which is good. You can't bring it to work. No. Because it does smell like beer. Well, you can. They're not going to tell you what to do. <laughs> maybe, maybe you work a job you're allowed to have a little bit of beer in the morning. <laughs> I don't know what job that is. <laughs> it's not one they're going to pay you for, probably, like us. <laughs> it's an occupational hazard in all, in all forms. Brewery. Yeah, yeah. Sound guy said it. Brewery. That's true. So, if you're working at a brewery, and you just need a little <laughs> pick, a pick me up in the morning. <laughs> Walk in with a pint sized coffee mug. <laughs> I'm having a really hard time with this one because I don't know how to describe the flavor. I'm, a, I, I'm here to bring you beer reviews, and to me, it just, it really just tastes like carbonated black coffee. Mm-hmm. There isn't much of a mouthfeel, it's not creamy. Yeah, they said it was it's, velvety. I wouldn't call it velvety. It just... I mean, I guess if, if, you're, if you're describing it as like a coffee velvet, then yeah, sure. But it's just like a nice coffee with some carbonation to it. And then on the back end, there's a little bit of stout. Like you added some stout creamer to it without the creaminess. Maybe? You know, new, all right. So normally when we're drinking stouts... They say, you know, this is a stout that's made with, you know, figs and and basil and all this other stuff. And it just tastes like a stout. This one is a stout that has coffee added. It just tastes like coffee. I I can't even think of a time in my mind where I was drinking a stout and it didn't taste like a stout. And this doesn't really taste like a stout. So that's maybe a plus. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I think you hit the nail right on the head there. And uh, I'm going to have to think about this and come back. <laughs> oh, so something we talked about over the break. Sound guy loved it. He goes, this is just coffee. Like, this is awesome. He actually called it an Irish energy drink, which is true. <laughs> it's a stout and it's a coffee. Irish energy drink. So actually, in the future, with this can, we're going to put it away and we're probably going to add some uh, some Telmore Dew and some Baileys to it. Make it a little coffee drink, put it in a mug. We'll go a little crazy here for yeah. you guys. Yeah, a little crazy for you. We're going to do that with the same episode we're going to do the lime with the tequila. <laughs> you know, we told you we were going to do that too. We're going to do it eventually. It all comes out eventually. But um, in, good, in good time. It is. So let's get that second flavor. I'm going to give a quick shout out to Ashlawn Farm Coffee, mm. the collaboration here. Their coffee's got to be pretty, pretty good here. Like really good. With this, I would love to see that process. Like what beans were they using? Did they have to go use a different blend than their normal coffee to counter the stout or complement the stout or anything like that? They didn't counter the stout. They beat the stout to oh. death, <laughs> which is which is good. Well, see, now, and here was I was going to say, that second taste, I actually got a little bit more stout that time with the coffee afterwards. That was just me, though. Let's see. I also let it hit the back of my tongue first. See, no, I've, I've, I've got to force it. I would have to force it in my mind to... Look for the stout first. Yeah, to say to say in good faith that I'm getting some stout, I'd have to dig, and it just wouldn't be a fair assessment. Oh, so you know, all right. So that one was like I had a stout here, and I had some coffee here. I took the stout and I took the coffee. At first, it was carbonated, then it kind of had a nice smooth velvety coffee. Huh. Velvety smooth. This beer is amazing. It is. I this almost is... don't want to call it a beer. Yeah, same. <laughs> same. This is this is a dangerous beer. This is something. And, and, and I've had some of those other hard coffees that came out on the market, the the bombers that oh, almost yeah. looked at like the Starbucks ones, and those are pretty good. Which are pretty good. This is better. This is better. This is this is a true true coffee drinkers beer. But if you're really like a latte fan, you're obviously not going to love this. It tastes like black coffee. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you do love coffee, it's for you. All right. Although, I'm curious to know what this beer would taste like with, like, a shot of mocha or something in it. So, uh, on that, we have a Facebook, we have a Twitter, we have an Instagram. You should follow them, because we do post little social shorts, videos you don't see on YouTube. You don't leave them hanging like that. Just say, drink what you want, enjoy what you want, and enjoy your day. Couldn't have said it better myself. That's and like do not s- chug that beer. Soda coffee. Yeah. Soda coffee. Yep, when you drink it like that, sure is. Soda coffee. Oh, it's
So uh, the way I even like heard about this one, like people were talking about, oh yeah, you got to try that Icelandic beer. You got to try that Icelandic beer. And I even went to the packy a couple times and people were asking for it. And they're like, oh, we already sold out. We're already sold out. So today I was just there this morning before we started filming. And I found it. So I had to grab it. 